I love, I love, I mean, I, I spent, I spent like uh, two months in, in Paris. Um, Did you and, like it? In the island. Yeah. Oh, I loved it. I, I loved it. My brother was living down there for a year. Um, Amazing. So he, he was, uh, he, uh, he, he did like a tour company, right? So um, he let me borrow a bike and I just biked Paris for like two months. Um, oh, that's so uh, cool. Yeah, man. I, I didn't go in the subway once because you don't see nothing in the subways, right? Like. Um, I've never, I've like, I've been to Paris two times, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh it's definitely Kinda, a, if you can if you can bike do it. I fell I fell in love with like French culture for for a bit, you know. I was wearing a scarf. <laughs> you were francophile. <laughs> I was like, kind of francophiled out, you know. And uh, I just gotta say, man, it's uh, it's one of the beautifulest countries in Europe, you know. So yeah, um, it's beautiful. You, you guys ready to start up? Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Lonzo. Sure. No, I was just to say, and like the people are amazing. I don't know why they get such a bad rap, but. I mean, well, like, when I went, they kind of serious. When I went, like, like the people yeah. went out of their way. I mean, I. You know, like, so oh funny. My God, these people are great. You know. It says the American, right? Come on now. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I feel like I feel like I left for a reason. Oh, uh, I know. There is. They are, yeah. man. She's got. She's got that insight. You know, she's coming she from the motherland. So. So People this are is just this, so yeah. Yeah, kind of like you know, like uh, pessimistic I, and rude and. Uh, the people sick. I used to hang out with were the people because um, I'm a taco truck person, right? So I grew mm -hmm. up eating taco trucks. So I went and ate at all the crepe trucks, you know, mm -hmm. and in the crepe, you know, like the immigrants from like, you know, Syria and Pakistan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ones rented, and I would love. I, I sat there. I was friends with all of them, you know. I think I thought like the immigrants were like. A lot more friendlier than the French, you know. And that's yeah, no, love. definitely. You know? oh, yeah, yeah. And then, so and then Sweeney, you moved up to Canada, and Canada's yeah. like the nicest. Oh yeah. Yeah. People are <laughs> super nice. Yeah. That's what I yeah, hear. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. Dumb. Like there is just like and like it rubs up. It rubs off on you. Like I, I tend to like be like because you know like like I was saying like in France it's just like everyone is just so gloomy and just like ooh like life is hard and like I'm so sad all the time. <laughs> And here, just everyone is happy and just helping each other. And I don't know, it's it's just super nice. Even though in Montreal itself, like we don't like the the French doesn't have don't have like the best reputation. But I, it's I still, was just gonna say I heard that about yeah. like the Montreal Montreal compared to the rest of Canada, there's like a little divide, not a yeah, yeah, it is. And especially because like for example, my partner is from Calgary, so he's Canadian and he's Anglophone. And also being an Anglophone in, in Montreal is not the best. <laughs> so there's like this. There's just a lot of things happening all the time. Yeah. <laughs> but I have a lot of good friends when I was traveling. So I traveled to Peru too, and I was there for about a month. And um, I met these guys from French Canada. I think they were near Montreal. But yeah. man, these guys. They're my homies till, till now. Like they, we, they, they taught me one thing. They're like, one thing you need to learn in French, tabakna, right? Oh my God. Right? I still tabak don't, I, I know it's a swear. I still don't know if I can use it and what it actually means. Oh, they told me like, it's like, I'm just, just so scared. <laughs> anytime, so, so anytime like we, we go out and they have like some type of like crazy thing to drink. And I'm like, dude, I don't want to drink that, bro. They're like, tabakna, bro, tabakna. Like, all right. You know, like my dad loves to like say it over and over and over again when he visits, <laughs> That's awesome. and be and be very loud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're my homies, man. We were top, our, our little crew over there was called Top Gun, and, and I you're just guys, so man. friendly. It's it's that's that's the thing. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, he he literally could be friends with anyone. I mean, that's just how he is. Yeah, he has. I mean, that. I'm, I'm the grump of the bunch, and <laughs> even like when we first met, I was just like. I don't know about him. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about. I don't know about. Him. But him and I, I are like about... brothers now. Yeah, we oh, yeah. we looked. We, we looked. And Ian and I looked at each other and we're like, we don't know about him. <laughs> yeah. Make sure, make sure he doesn't get in front of this line. All right. <laughs> Our asses will be kicked. We were just like ready. No, I'm just kidding. That didn't happen. <laughs> so I'm, I'm. I mean, I'm a guy that's really interested in like just French culture. I love it. You know, like how was it growing up in in in, uh, in France? Because you grew up in southwestern France, right? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in a super small town, there were like 3,000 people there. 
So everybody knows each other. If you do something, everybody knows it. Uh, everybody's old. Uh, it's just, uh, it was very limited. And especially like me wanting to do art, it was just like not really accessible or anything. Mm -hmm. So I quickly, I like I moved out uh, of my parents at like 16. Mm -hmm. to, like go to school a bit like here and there. So I, um, I wanted to live in a big city. <laughs> That's for sure. Oh, no doubt. So uh, yeah. how old were you when you uh, moved to, to, uh, to Canada? I guess I was uh, math. 22? 22, 22, 23? Yeah. But do you, you, you kind of miss that though, right? Like uh, knowing that community. Like in Hawaii, we call it like a hanai, right? Like it's everybody's your uncle and aunt. And like no matter what you do, like you think you're getting away with it. But when you get home, your mom was like, Oh, I, I heard I heard from your auntie. I heard from your auntie. You, you, you get your ass <laughs> that with, sounds right? miserable. It's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah you no, got to really watch out what you do. It wasn't really like that. It was more like like everybody knows each other, but not in like this like very kind and like loving way. It wasn't no. really a community. It was more like, oh, I heard about this one over there. And, uh, <laughs> you, you know what really bothered me when, uh, when, when I was traveling in France, right? Me and my brother would like uh, on the weekends, we take the train out, go to Versailles or something like that, right? And uh, we remember these two kids were having a lot of fun on the train. They're like laughing and doing their thing. And then their mom was like, no. <laughs> shh, shh. I was like, dude, let, just let the kids no play. No patience. Right? No like, patience. just let the kids play, man. We were just watching them having fun, speaking French. And, you know, and they're like, oh, man, this is cool. And then the mom was just like, no, no, no. You know, like, um, but I don't, is that, is that how, is that how it is like getting raised in France? I don't know. You know, yeah, like, I mean, like, I don't want like to do like a generalization or, when, or anything. Yeah, me but, either, like, yeah. The, the way the way I grew up was kind of like yeah like I don't know it's there I would say like first of all in friends like you don't with your family you don't say I love you to each other you don't have this like very like you're not very close or anything so it was always like kind of like coldish and uh, and yeah um, yeah like no patience at all mm. like it like even even now when i do call my family i do feel like we have this great connection now because i'm far but it's like always like drama and just like complaining about other people in the family mm. and it's just like enjoy your life yeah you don't need all of that, yeah. you need all of that. Well, i mean as, as like a lot of us come from the latin culture and uh yeah. that's uh we got we you know we get a lot of love but we get a lot of drama too so i know that i know the drama. yeah but like the, the love is the good part when when i first met my my partner and like i met his family and everyone is hugging each other and saying i love you and i was like this is so weird <laughs> i don't know this i Whoa. like it but this is so so weird <laughs> What do you what do you what, what are you guys trying to get? You know, like <laughs> right? what do you want from me? What do you what? really want from me? Yeah. Do you guys when, actually love each other? Yeah. Wow. Dude, it's like that's what I get when my mom's really nice. Like, hi, Yoni, how are you doing? Like, oh dang, okay, mom, you got a thousand dollars. You know, like <laughs> <laughs> you already know it's coming. You know, so and then you then you moved it you moved to um oh I wanna ask you one thing, like, what is your favorite place to eat out in out in France? Oh in France. Oh definitely just at home. At home, home food. My mom has like this, like I have like a few dish that I do miss from like my parents. Mm -hmm. um, there's this one dessert called clefouti. Mm -hmm. That sounds. Which good. is basically like yeah, like cr like if you do like a crepe like thing, and it's just like you pour it into like a big pan and with like cherries and everything, and it makes this like Ooh. cake. Uh, Ooh. And it's so good. It, are cheese. the cherries tart? You had me a cherry. <laughs> you had me a cherries. Oh, that sounds God. so good. But what I mean, what, yeah. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, I'm go sorry. Ahead. Uh, no, what, I, what I miss the most is the cheese, definitely. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. cheese and yes. bread. We we would go out to Versailles <laughs> just to get cheese on the weekends. You know, oh like my God. at the, the the little uh, m uh, market they had out there. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude, we we take the train, pay whatever is 15 euros just to go get cheese. You know, it, um, it, 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 it's super cheap though, because like here having like like getting good cheese in in Montreal is it's usually imported from France and it's super expensive. And I don't know. I know that every time that I go back to French, the first thing that I do when I land is that I get a ham and butter sandwich. Mm. That's it. Dude, is that that goat cheese? It's like, yeah, man. Oh, goat cheese I know. is good. <laughs> and then I know, I know you missed this, right? Walking Ooh. by the, uh, the 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 bakery in the mornings and that smell of the croissants. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's what yeah, I yeah. miss. Because uh, my 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 brother lived in the we, in the second era descent, right? And uh, we would walk and those the smell in the morning. Of like uh, croissants baking and that line is what I 
really loved about France. Like, woo, make me hungry. Yeah, um, I, mean, I was gonna say, I was gonna say, us big boys over here, us big boys over here need some sustenance. I'm like, come on, man, I'll get my, I'll get, get my coffee. Have breakfast? Yeah. I'll get like two croissants, bro. In the morning, I was good, man. I was like, I am I good. I'm just I glad you didn't say man. stinky cheese. I thought you were gonna Think say like Stinky cheese is the some... best though, right, boo? No, stinky cheese is really the best. Oh, you don't best. even know it. You don't. Oh, I can't are... do blue cheese. I cannot do it. Stop doing crab no. singles. Stop. No, 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 no. That's your idea of cheese. I like. Oh, I like. Oh, no, I like honey, brie, oh. brie, Explosion. gouda, uh, codswald. Give me those ones. Swiss I'm... even. I'm not French. I'm nothing French. But what I loved is like for lunch we'd buy these big old, those big old breads. You know whatever. Oh, the baguettes. Are. The baguettes, oh. and then we'd have cheese, and we'd add salami, and that's it, bro. That's it. No, that's, that, that, that's the thing that I Did love it, about. The CN? Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like you don't have to make it fancy for mm. it to be so good. Because it, it's something about the food in France, right? It's just just like uh, it's very organic, and it's very yeah. natural, and it just tastes good, man. Like it's just like, you know, it's like good barbecue. You know, you're, it's oh, salivating. Man, you kind of laugh. You kind of laugh was, to yourself. It, yeah, it was so funny because like when like the first time I was like, you know, like I really like build it up from my partner. I was like, okay, okay, you're gonna have like this ham and butter sandwich. It's like it's the best thing ever. And he was like, okay, okay, cool. And then when he got the sandwich, he was like, it's just ham and butter. There's no pickles. <laughs> There's no tomatoes. There's no salad. I was like, no, I don't know. He was like, it's not a sandwich. And I was like, yes, it is. <laughs> but you got to give him some of that. You got to take him to France and give him some of that uh, that that uh, French tomatoes. Like that French tomatoes yeah. are they're he, good too. He loved everything. He he was like freaking out about absolutely everything in France. Yeah. So that was nice. But you don't gain weight either, because it's I don't know what it is. Because you're walking. You don't, you don't get fat. I don't I don't get it. I didn't get fat. Wait, and then it's organic. Anyway, it's organic sure. food. There's no preservatives. There's or no anything preservatives. Like it's real. It's real. Yep. And if you're, I mean, if it's fast paced in the city, uh, like wherever you're at, like in the country, you probably just, you know, huffing it. You know, it just. Uh, <laughs> so Sweeney's going to like go no. <laughs> but that's like, way. No, that's what, it's funny that you're saying that, but because I'm just well, realizing right, how like <laughs> I like I, I've I've changed so much. Like yeah, I used to like eat like that in France, and like since I'm in Montreal, it's like vegan food, and like it's just um, it's 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 funny how mm -hmm. things change. And then and then you uh, then at 22 you uh, moved to Montreal. How, mm -hmm. um, how was that? How was that whole change? Because you went from like. Uh, Real nice, kind of, and there's not, it, France has nice weather, right? Like compared to most yeah, European countries, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, but like I never actually knew winter per se. Like I've, I remember like long crazy winter when I was like a child, but, uh, and I've always been like, I hate summer. I hate the heat. So it's just mm -hmm. like, it's just Dagger. where I want to go. And um, it was, it was a crazy change. It was like, I've never set foot in that country before, and I was actually moving there to live there. Um, I don't know. It was it was probably the best decision that I've ever made. I took my cat, a suitcase, hmm. and uh, there we go. And okay. it's been crazy amazing. Okay, so What's your brave. cat's name? You're brave. Which one? Because now I have two. <laughs> you have two. What are both of their names? Uh, one is Loki. Nice. nice. I've actually yeah. got a cat named Loki. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone like who got an, a cat named Loki probably had it around like 2011, 2012. No, mine I actually got no. like about four year, four years ago. Oh damn. Yeah. <laughs> black cat? No, not even. No, uh, I actually already had a black cat named AC, Aristocat, mm. and he was a part of a pair of. We had another cat named DC, so I had AC DC. Oh, oh nice. So cool. Um, <laughs> Headbang. D DC's passed away since then, and we got Loki and we got Harley Quinn. Oh! Aww. So, but Harley Quinn is a boy, Loki is a girl, <laughs> and she's a pain in the butt. The California. I, hate, I hated girl cats before then, because they're all the ones I had when I was a kid were all mean, and she's just become my cat. <laughs> it, it's she makes appearances like that. on here. <laughs> When you don't want a cat, it's always like you ended up loving them so much. Yeah. 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 So you have Loki and who else? And uh, Winifred. Oh, Winifred. Nice. That's cute. Yeah, nice. And who came, a, who came with you? Uh, Loki. She's like, she's this eight year old, old, like black Angora kitty. She's beautiful and oh, she's nice. mean. 
And she, <laughs> <laughs> she only loves me. Uh, and we got a second cat back in January. She's a little sphinx. Oh, nice. nice. Oh, wow. How is she? Yeah. She is okay, so she's almost two. She is a terror. <laughs> Bad. She Terrible acts, twos. Talkative. She acts like a dog. Those this these these cats are not cats, they're dogs. She like waves her tail, she runs everywhere, she wants to play, she yells all the time. Um, but they're they they could help so much because they're like they're just like so hot. I mean, like they're cold, but their body is just burning. Oh, so yeah. they don't have fur, right? Exactly. So they have they they have, they have like a um, faster metabolism, mm, and yeah. every like during the summer, like it gets pretty hot in Montreal, and she's just on you. And it's so hot. Yeah, like, I feel your pain there. Care. <laughs> I I just got home yesterday. It was a hundred here yesterday, oh and I got home. I sit on the couch, just trying to relax, cool off, and Loki's like right here, want to sit, and I'm just like no. I love you, but get away. I threw off like five times and finally gave up because she just kept coming back. <laughs> She's like, you're going to love me, damn it. I, I just want to let you know that JR is the leader of our cuddle crew. So everybody loves to cuddle with JR, especially yeah. Steve. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, when, it, when it's cold in SD, those those 4 o'clock, 4 a.m. mornings, and you're going to go get coffee. I mean, sometimes you got to nussle up, you know? <laughs> you're, all, you're all, JR, put your arm around me. And he's like, no. no. Come on. No, all okay. honesty, the cuddle. The Cuddle Crew is our, our security group for when we go to Comic-Con. We just get all the big guys to stand in front. No one can get past us. There's just a line of like four or five big guys. You're not going to get past us. <laughs> so if you ever need a security crew at uh, Comic-Con, you know what to call. That's very yeah. good to know. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> have you. Have you been to San Diego Comic-Con? No, never. I wanted to this year. Oh, but, oh dude. I would have been so oh, awesome if you went. Dude, come, you got us now. Oh, you got us. You, you know we're like COVID. <laughs> I know, ne but next year, next year you got us. Like, Hopefully, I, I would love to. Yeah. You like you like Mexican food? Yeah, yeah. I oh, I want to I want to come for yeah. the con, but I also I want to visit. <laughs> oh, dude, oh, there we go. Dude, there yeah. you go. Like uh, some yeah. good spots. San Diego's a cool city. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Jared, Jared will come early and Steve will come early and we'll, we'll take you around. We'll take you to some awesome fish taco trucks, the best. Ooh, we'll yeah, take you to the best me. Mexican food a a around, right? Like uh, Quatres Milpas. If you, ain't, if you don't know about Quatres Milpas and you in, Oak, in, uh, in San Diego, you, you, you're, not, you're not eating right. All right, I'm into it. <laughs> oh, you, you, you're coming. It's, it, it's, it's, it's good, man. You, you're not going to, you know. You, you, but are you, you vegan gonna love now? It. Sorry? Are you vegan now? No, I okay. That, when okay. I was saying vegan, no, no. I'm like, I'm in this new like gluten-free and okay. like, lactose-free thing. But uh, okay. I can't be vegan. I love eggs too much. I know. Right? <laughs> Good. Yeah. And Good old fashioned and omelet cheese. or frittata. Oh, Mexican cheese, man. Mexican cheese. Dude. Oh, man. Yeah. I just had that this morning. You. I love yeah. French, uh, French and, and Mexican cheese, man. It's, it's Queso fresco, good. right? Or like... Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, yeah, that stuff's good too, man. Had it this so, morning. Well, can I ask you what, what inspired you to start uh, to start, uh, you know, doing comic art or art in general? Uh, um, I always like I've always been drawing as far as I remember. Like even when I was like a, a young teen or stuff like that, um, art was like my my way of expression. Um, and in school, I was just like terrible at everything except art. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and at some point I was just like, maybe, maybe there is something there. Um, went to school for like character, like not character design, uh, graphic design. So, um, and, uh, I was lucky enough that it was still high school, but we were learning, like in college, the same amount of like, uh, history of art and everything. So it was super cool. And, um, by then what I wanted to do was bande dessinée. So I wanted to work for French comic books and, um, uh, my, my my boyfriend at the time just gave me an Iron Man comic and then he gave me a Spider-Man comic and I was like, well, holy shit, <laughs> <laughs> this is fucking amazing. And um, and then I fell into a rabbit hole. Oh, the rabbit hole. Yeah. 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 Discovering comic Boom hole. Studios and like all of like Cartoon Network stuff that they were also doing and uh, and My Little Pony and everything. And, uh, 
So speaking of like Boom Studios and like the major studios like IDW and Marvel and Archie, I mean, um, what are your feelings? I mean, how how did how did you kind of break in and how's it like working with them? Because I mean, you kind of consider them big studios. Yeah, um, honestly, work, all of them working with all of them has been such a pleasure. I was lucky enough that um, in 2018. So okay, so I've been doing cons for a long time without necessarily having books out or anything um, but I've never worked with a publisher really before last year and um, in 2018 I went to the Toronto Comic Art Festival in Toronto, TCAF, uh, which is one of my favorite honestly. Um, I usually go there to table but not that one year and I had my portfolio and I went to do portfolio reviews and I was just like why not? So I met the people at IDW and Boom Studio right after. Nice. And uh, two months after that, I had a green lit for Even Love Yourself at Boom Studios. And that, that same following year, I did a cover of My Little Pony for IDW. And six months later, they were like, hey, we have this Captain Marvel thing. Do you want to try and do a test for it? And oh, I did. Yeah. And I got it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, the Captain Marvel looks looks amazing. Um, I was uh, showing the guys earlier that, uh, oh my god, let's see, I should have had this thing bookmarked, but um, the suit that you designed? I didn't design the suit. Oh, you didn't? I, I mean, this no, 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 looks no, no, no. spectacular. Yeah, it's such a great, great one. I love it. Um, and then also, too, like in talking with JR, uh, we kind of noticed that a lot of your characters um, are all different. I one tried to. <laughs> yeah. One of the things that we liked a lot. But as a yeah. big guy, I appreciate that because you don't see the big guys and you don't see, like, you go look at a Spider-Man book, everyone looks the same proportions. Yep. And I and I was looking through your artwork because I'm not familiar with your artwork prior to mm -hmm. today. But I was looking through it and, like, I, and I saw that, like, yeah, you made Kitty probably smaller, mm -hmm. but then you've got Captain Marvel that's a thicker girl. Not fat, but a thicker girl. And That's then good. you've got other like Velma is different, and each one of them you could tell is their their proportions are different, which is awesome, and their hairstyles are so they're very unique to each other. It's not because you see some people, and I won't name the, the person's art person that we always kid about, but you look at his art, and every one of them looks like his wife, and every one of them is exactly the same, and it's just like mm -hmm. that gets stagnant, yeah, and it doesn't no, represent anything. So true. Um, honestly, that's still something that I'm working on because I do still get comments of like, hey, your characters always look like the same and stuff like that. And uh, I feel like it's just important to have a wide representation of characters. Yeah, we um, love it. Um, and then also too, uh, would you mind talking a little bit of the uh, your book that you have yeah. right now that's uh, available at Boom Studios, mm -hmm. um, Eat and, and Love Yourself? Yeah, for sure. Um, so this one is definitely uh, super personal <laughs> compared to Captain Marvel. But um, so it started, um, I started working on it back in 2015. Uh, we were two, I had a, I had a writer. And um, it comes from my own struggle with eating disorder uh, when I was in my late teens and relationship with my family about it. And just, again, I kind of like showed this like representation of like, French family of like, you know, giving compliments, but kind of like a backhand compliment. So yeah. um, this was like kind of thing that really influenced um, mm -hmm. me and the way I was sick and everything. Um, so yeah, um, the book the, the the book was first a Kickstarter that we did back in 2017. Uh, it was su successfully funded and everything. Um, and a year later, then we met Boom Studios and then the book was picked up. And now it's out, and um, yeah. So, what's your uh, favorite thing to draw? Because it might not be comic book characters. What What is your favorite thing? Witches. <laughs> witches. I, like witches. I draw a lot of witches. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so awesome. Like, so, do you have a Do you have a favorite witch? Like a uh, a favorite yeah. character? Yeah. Honestly, like I was saying, Sabrina has always been a, Sabrina. a, a, a favorite of mine, that's for sure. So, so what awesome. about witches then do you, do you like? 
that, that you can't, that you find fascinating that you have to draw them? I guess it's the, um, like, they're normal, but they're different. Kind of. <laughs> There's no normal, but you know, um, this like very, um, I, f I always thought that women were fascinating because there's like this like thing about powers and just like femininity and just like this like um just like having like a great self-esteem and everything um and i i just i just find witches to have like to, for, for me even though like the word witch is definitely like non-binary but i i found this 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 word witch to be so powerful as like someone who has it all together and is also like cool and uh, um, yeah, so I guess bottom line, I really like to draw people like people that are cool. Eh. Oh, definitely, that's awesome. Yeah. So if if you could pick like anybody, um, who would who would be the uh, the writer that you would like to work with? Oh my God, there is like. A, many of them but if i just like like that out of my mind um kelly sue DeConnick. oh she's awesome Ooh, she <laughs> i actually i actually yeah. met her and i'll i'll mm -hmm. give this to some of the show later but i met her at image expo a couple years ago and took a picture with her and her oh. thing was you can take a picture with me but you have to do a duck face <laughs> yeah so there's actually a picture of me with her we're both doing duck faces why don't oh, you do it for the YouTube so cool. the two YouTube watchers? Guys. I will I will edit it into here later. It'll okay, be put perfect. in here. Uh, I need to see it at the very oh end. Oh my god! Yes. Um, so so Sweet, I want to kind of like uh, kind of you know put it in reverse real quick and 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 talk about your book. And um, I'm actually I actually work with a lot of teens and I work with um, a lot of teen um, teen ladies. I'm always like to call mm -hmm. them ladies because they're they're always a lot lot more older than me. And, and have a lot more wisdom. But I think your book, you know, I'm gonna buy a couple of those, uh, buy a couple of your books and give them to them because, you know, they're, they're, they, they're dealing with, uh, you know, a lot of those, a lot of the issues that your book speaks to. And I just wanna thank you like uh, for doing that, you know, doing that and and uh, I think it actually, you're putting all this positivity in the world, right? And uh, all this positivity is gonna be received and you're gonna change lives, you know? Like I think uh, a lot of my young ladies need that, you know? Um, Definitely empowering. Mm -hmm. I, I, I definitely try to. I just remember that when I was sick, when I was struggling, I was like looking for comfort of like, you know, just someone who had went through something similar. Cause um, even if it's like hard, it's like, it's comforting to like read something about that. And, um, and like doing like me being a fan of comic books, I was just like, I, I want to read something like that, like that. So, I just hope that this book does the same thing for someone. Yeah, it, it's a shared experience, right? Like, um, yeah, everybody wants to know, like, hey, man, I'm not the only one going through this. Like, someone that is actually making it went through it, and they're making it. You know, like I can, I could do it too. You know, it's, it's yeah, that. exactly. You know, it's that for everybody. Like, you know, like a lot of us, like, uh, I mean, we all have our superhero, our our, our favorite superheroes, and we always kind of like uh, look to the one that kind of looks like us. You know. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, for me, it's it's Miles because I just love the uh, the message in there. Like anybody can wear the mask, right? Like mm -hmm. you don't have to be Peter Parker. You know, you could be Miles Morales. You could be Penny Parker. You can be, you know, Spider Man Noir. You know, like you can be anybody. And I think yeah, that, definitely. That, I think I think you reach out to to young ladies that way in, with your book. And I just want to say I appreciate it. You know, so. Well, <laughs> I appreciate it too. So thank oh, you. Totally. Well, and the cool thing about something like that is. Because I mean, at least I know I have my own inner demons, and I know some people that have believe, have recovered from blame. It's still a struggle. It's mm -hmm. not something that, okay, I've overcome it. I'll never have to deal with it again. To have that book, to be able to come back to it when you have that feeling, mm -hmm. and you can read that and kind of revigorate yourself. That's something nice to have to to be able to go. Okay, let me put that in check again. Yeah. And I know that like, there's like a, I, I've, I've read some like reviews of like people had that had a tough time with the end of, of my book because you know huh? when you read a book you re I don't want to go too far I, like to like spoil it or anything but I know that when you do read something you want a happy ending you know mm -hmm. um, but with 
with eating disorder, it's not like that. It's not yep. magical. It doesn't go away. It's a long process. Yep. So um, I just wanted to like give a sense of hope instead of a conclusion of like everything will be perfect and and you'll see, you know. And I, I think that's what what people that don't have, you know, that don't have th that thing, right? That demon, right? Like they always think like, um, yeah, I mean, it, it'll go away, right? Um, but it doesn't because it's that's why we're always recovering, right? We're always kind of yeah. recovering, you know, recovering alcoholics, you know, or recovering from some type of thing, you know, it's mm -hmm. it's who you are and it's who you it's what you accept, right? Like you accept mm -hmm. that, you know, and it just it's part of you and you accept that it's part of you and you kind of move on with your life instead of having this big backpack. It's a purse, right? Like it's small, but you're exactly. always carrying that with you, right? So. Yeah, and uh, I mean, we appreciate it from the team nerd or putting that positivity out in the world. Um, yeah, though the world needs it. I mean, more yeah, definitely, especially now. It's especially now. Yeah. yeah, it's different times. It's like we're living a real time movie, and uh, any type Crazy. of uh, hope and uh, positivity is what any person needs, especially now, for sure. Guys, mm -hmm. it's a simulation. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. We're in the yeah. Matrix. Can we stop? I'm, yeah, no, if, stop. I'm, if I'm in the Matrix, I need to learn karate or kung fu or something. I don't want to be egotistical, but I always think like, did I do something wrong to make this whole art, this whole simulation bad for everybody else? Like, it's pretty bad, man. We it's collectively bad, did something dude. wrong. I think something's wrong going on. What do you think? I mean, with all this COVID thing going on, like, how is it out there in uh, Montreal right now? Oh, I feel like it's been pretty bad uh, right now. It's I feel like there is like a plateau, definitely. Oh, good. Uh, but you know, we're like a pretty much maybe a hundred cases a day. But wow. uh, not Montreal itself, Quebec. So it's still pretty big. Um, the whole part, the whole area. That's crazy. Yeah, but um, the way I feel about all of that is happening right now is that like, it's fucking hard. But man, we mm. did deserve it. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. do you have a cool mask that you wear when you go out? Yeah, yeah, gotta. <laughs> <laughs> it's that, cool that, because that's a costume right there, right? Yeah. yeah and I'm an introvert, and I don't have to smile. I don't have to talk to anyone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> For some reason, so, I think no one can hear me when I'm wearing a mask, and I'm just talking shit the whole time. No, uh, we just ignore you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, look no, at that guy without a mask. I, I feel like yeah. I'm yelling all jerk. the time. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because some yeah. people, well, I, I went to, I mean, this is off subject. And like I said, when being hungry and everything, I went to Jersey Mike's and I was giving the guy an order and, and he's like, what'd you say? It just looks like it's a windshield and everything. He couldn't hear me. <laughs> I had to like tilt my head out. Of the, I said, you know, it's just so horrible, man. Yeah. So, yeah. so back to better times. <laughs> so you went to New York Comic Con a couple years ago mm -hmm. and I've gone before. What did you think of New York Comic Con? Is that like the first big con you went to prior than the Toronto one, or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like since then, I've I've done like Emerald City and Seattle and stuff, but New York was definitely my first big mm. one. The first time I went was as a visitor, and that was insane. Yeah. And I loved it, and I re I just loved that the artist alley was like separate. Yes. And everyone yes. is just together, which reminded me of TCAF because TCAF is mostly it's just artists. And it's a giant library okay. and everyone is together. Nice. So that reminded me of that. And I don't mind crowds. And I had this like ball in my stomach of like excitement because you're surrounded <laughs> by people who loves comics. And, uh -huh. and like as a little French person, I had been in Canada <laughs> for a year. It was my first, was it my first time in the US? I believe so. And you're like walking around and you see like G. Scott Campbell and then Matthew was Calera and you're like, holy shit, where am I? <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah. so crazy. And I've I, gone twice yeah. and I love it. It's such a good yeah. show. Um, I, I've been trying to convince Ian to go. I think I've convinced Ian to go. I'm going. Um, the thing, because San Diego, it's more of a pop culture con. I mean, mm -hmm. there's, there's Artist Alley, but like you said, with New York, it's a whole like the first time I went, it was a separate building. Mm -hmm. Now I I went two years ago and they put it in the basement because they're rebuilding yeah, basement, the yeah. they're rebuilding the the side building. But I mean, literally, the first time I went it was like, here's a map that says you are here, and here's like six rows of tables and stuff, and you just go down and you just see all these artists and writers, and you're just like, how did you get all these people into one room? 
I mean, it's just mm. amazing. Yeah. I mean, you see Greg Horn in there. You see Hildebrandt. You see, I mean, like you were saying, J. Scott Campbell. Everyone. Uh, Madeira, <laughs> um, Joe Mad was there the year, first year I went. Um, and it's just, it's phenomenal. It's it's great for a comic book. To me, that's a comic book con. It is. It is. Um, I've, I, I've had, like, I got the chance to table two times now. And last year was so crazy. It's just like, I'm at my table and someone comes to me and like shakes my hand and it's like, we're chat for a bit. He's like, hey, by the way, I'm trying more. And I'm like, <laughs> wow. Okay. <Just> like... <laughs> <laughs> that only happens at like New York Comic Con because everyone is there and it's mm-hmm. just crazy. Wow. So is is there any uh, particular artist? I know you kind of mentioned Peach and then also, you know, you mentioned J. Scott Campbell, but is there any other artists that um, you draw from or that you admire? Yeah. Oh, there's so many. Uh, there's Mirka Andolfo. Oh my God. She's awesome. Yeah. Love she's her. so talented. So, so talented. And she's so kind too. <laughs> yeah. I, I um, love her Mercy books. And like I met her in San Diego and she was so nice. Like I totally yeah. agree. Yeah. I yeah. Got, yeah. And she draws so quickly and just, oh, she's incredible. I got lucky and got a, uh, a piece done by her. I got a Slave Leia on a Star Wars cover. Nice. Um, long, a couple of years before she blew up. So, no, she seems really cool. I didn't get to meet her. I got did through an agency, but it was a very cool cover. Yeah, she's still do, so talented. Do you, do you, so it sounds like you go fangirl like we go fanboy at, at cons. Yeah, but, like, it's very internal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's like... I did. It did happen one time, kinda, because I, I I met Paul Rudd at the Comic Con last year. Oh, nice! And oh, that what? was insane. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was a photo op. I paid for it, but still. But still. Yeah. 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 Experience cool. alone, for sure. Okay. okay. Like I was, I was with. I don't know if you uh, if you know Leanna Kangas. She's also like a crazy cool talented comic artist. And we went we went to uh, to meet him and we gave him like our comic books and we took the picture. With him. <laughs> That's awesome. It. How was he? Was he pretty nice? Yeah, he was so kind. He, he could, like, we gave him the comics to do, and he was like, it's for me. I was like, dude, like, yeah, <laughs> of course. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the guy never me. ages. No, I know. never ages. Vampire but, person. <laughs> <laughs> but that's one of the things that, that we like here, like, also as a, as a community, is, like, if, like, the writers and artists are, are appreciative, are, are nice, you know, to us, you know, when we were asking, because a lot of times, like, you know, we, we're we intimidated, you know, mm-hmm. and to have that artist or that writer that you admire to just be like, you know, hey, relax, or, you know, how are you doing? Like, oh, it's my, it's a pleasure to meet you. I mean, it, it just kind of eases all of that, and it makes them feel like they're a real normal person, and you can mm-hmm. have that kind of relationship and kind of talk to them. Um, I, for one, love that. I love that feeling of, you know, kind of meeting those guys and having that um, that kindness reciprocated. Because, I mean, it's it's tough sometimes to be like, you know, oh, I know that you're, you know, super busy, but can you please sign this for me? Mm-hmm. You know, or can we take a picture? You know, and stuff like that. I, I, I totally agree. And I think that's a thing that I've definitely noticed with... Uh the North American comic book culture. Um, because in, in France, like, again, like I wanted to do Bon Disney, so I would go to shows and then go meet people. And you're a fan, but you're also someone who wants to be an artist. And it's always so cold. And just, th- there's this like wall and um, it was not nice. And I just find in North America, everyone's just like, oh yeah, like it's great. And then you can do this and then meet this person. And then uh, it's just so warm and nice. Can I ask you a question, uh, uh, Sweeney? Um, mm-hmm. So I know like a com- uh, like comic cons are very important to like uh, artists and, and writers income. Like how mm-hmm. is, is that affecting? Do you think that's in fact uh, affecting the community of um, artists and writers right now, like by not having yeah. Comic Cons, yeah, definitely. I know that there that there's people who count on it really, really hard. Um, mm. So it's definitely uh, it's definitely difficult for a lot of uh, 
artists and writers right now for sure yeah i mean we try to support i mean we see them all going to cgc and doing signings and everything else and i know that you know, a lot of us submitted and mm -hmm. i mean we also have like tomorrow we have uh clayton crane coming to san diego right like uh he's yeah, doing we a big just tour. had him oh cool all right he's coming but out honestly really it's 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 hard for everyone right now anyway so i know right but i imagine yeah. it'd probably be for the for the i don't want not the step like knew that I, the guy I know named knew the artist um, for J Scott Campbell and the big guys, they could still pump out stuff and they could still get stuff, but it's for the people that are just trying to break in and the people that are just going like new was doing like 30 shows a year where he would travel with all the cons and I could see it really impacting them a lot because mm -hmm. That was their, like you said, that was their lifeblood. Mm -hmm. I mean, at least to the degree you've at least got, you know, you got steady work you can do. People will buy commissions from you, like Alonzo did. <laughs> um, Commission guy. <laughs> or like Peach, where she's, Peach was saying she's booked until like 2023 or something I saw Holy. recently. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. She's like not taking any new commissions for several years. Um, so at least you guys got that. But, it's hard. I mean, for the the lower end guys, the ones, especially yeah. ones that are trying to get in the industry. Yeah, and especially because like there's a lot of titles that are being canceled right now and yep. put on old and stuff. So that's also not helping. So there's definitely a lot of uh, change happening. Yeah. So, um, Sweeney, do you, uh, your it's your commission list because I see some posts every now and then on your social media because you're like mm -hmm. very very active on like Twitter. You're mm -hmm. active on Instagram. Uh, you know, how do people get a hold of you if they they want to want a commission? I mean, do they DM you? Do they, they just reach out? I mean, are you even taking commissions right now? <laughs> I am not. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you booked till 2023? No. Are you booked till 2023? No, but I. What happened is that in April and stuff, like a lot of my work was put on alt, and then I opened my commission uh, list, and I I took like a maybe like 15 and it was like enough for like two months and then work came back and then now I'm late and I'm still working on them and I feel terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I have, I have, I'm lucky enough that I have a lot of work right now. So um, taking commissions would, I will make people wait and uh, I don't want to do that. But if I open them again, um, I'm represented by Comic Art House. Um, if you go on their website, if you look for my name, or you can just send them an email and be like, I want a commission by Sweeney Boo, and then there's going to be like uh, prices and everything and uh, mm -hmm. the chat. Nice. But not right now. <laughs> yeah. well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to wait till uh, we meet you in San Diego. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. We're, gonna, we're all going to hang out. We're all going to yeah, go to Pontus Milpas together. And it'll be on, be lined and, up. And uh, it, you, your meal will be on, on JR. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, uh, just two more questions from us before we let you go. I, I really like your tattoo on your arm. Can you tell us, is it okay if I ask you more about yeah, that? Like, yeah. that's sick. Yeah. It's a, it's a full sleeve and I have oh, a mix of wow. Adventure Time. I have Marceline. I what? have a little BMO. I have a little BMO right there. Oh my God. Nice. Adventure Time cool. is awesome. Yes. I love Adventure <laughs> Time. And my BMO is, the, is skateboarding. <laughs> nice. And I have three, uh, three of my little ponies. Awesome. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I mean, I, nice. I saw I saw it on a, on some of your other interviews. I was like, dude, why aren't they asking about the dope tat tattoo on your arm? I, um, it's like cartoon stuff, and even here I have like a Gravity Falls one. How does wow. it feel? I don't have any. I, I don't have any tattoos. Do you guys have any tattoos? Like, yeah, how does it feel to get one. a tattoo? I'm trying to get one? thinner before I get it's one. Painful. <laughs> yeah, is the it outline. Painful? Not painful. I, th I think the outline is the worst part because it's. It's like it feels like someone has like a nail scratch and scratch and scratch and scratch it. But then when they yeah. fill in, if it's a right certain here, right? area, yeah, I don't know. my oh, worst part area. was here. Really? Like the inside of the arm here, and it was like a brush because it was like feeling like dark, and wow. I was just like digging, digging, and oh. digging, and that was painful. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no tattoos are tattoos are painful, but they're addictive. Yeah, they are. That's they what I've are. heard too. And they're expensive. <laughs> yes, yeah. that too. <laughs> But it's I'm, hard. So, my, I'm my, still waiting for two. <laughs> my wife won't let me get one. She's like, no, no, no. Every, I ask her, no, 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 no. Like my kid, no, 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 no. You know, um, for reals. Um, but in closing, um, I want to ask you and ask the rest of the crew, like, but um, I guess we'll start off first. Like, 
what do you got on your iTunes right now? What is your what, what is your jam? You know, um, I'm gonna ask I'm gonna ask you first, uh, 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 Sweeney. What's your, what's your jam? What's what's your albums right now on your on your iTunes? Um, uh, I'm listening to the new Haley Williams album, uh, Petals of Armor. It's she like it just came out back in February and it's been just on repeat all the time. Mm. It's it's brilliant. It's really really good. What you got on yours, Steve? Uh, I just uh, started listening to the new Nas, man. I mean, hey. I, I gotta 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 support my man Nas, man. He's one of my favorite, you know, hip hop artists of all time. Excellent writer, you know, and just uh, has you know this enamor towards him. I just I'm a major fan, so yeah, it's a good album. Definitely check it out. What you got, Alonzo, on your on your iTunes? Oh my God! So I don't have any albums in particular. I what I the have is just um, radio stations. So I um, my go to is always a '90s station, and it's always '90s hip hop. I I love it. I mean, I can just leave that on for hours. You know, like at work or like even working out. I mean, that stuff's just it it it. it soothes me it reminds me of so many things so that's 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 my jam yeah right now i got jason isbel like he's one he's my man jason is what i listen to him all the time like really good stuff uh, kind of country folk type of stuff uh but it's 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 super good um and what do you got jr on your on your itunes being the old man here uh guns and roses <laughs> pretty much anything that would be guns JR. and roses Enter Sandman. Uh, but then, but then the funny thing is, I'll listen to '90s rock, and I'll also do West Coast gangster rap. Yeah, you're, 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 you're a cholo, there. dude. You're a cholo. You are cholo, bro. You're cholo, I, homie. I am white, though. <laughs> Make Hold this official. Yes. I am the whitest white bread no, you there ain't. is. You cholo, bro. <laughs> but I just, I that's I'm put stuck. up them I signs, Jr. Listen. Put up them signs. I can't listen to anything new day- nowadays. It's just unless it's like Adele, I'm waiting for her new album to come out. Oh yeah, she got the voice. Oh, yeah. I, voice. And I know I lost my man card on that one, but no, no, fine. man, she's got a great voice. She's very talented. Um, music is universal, man. It doesn't matter at all. Damn right. You, I might you try listen to, find, to anything. I might and try everything. to find Deftones just released their new. They're from Sacramento. They released their new song today, and I guess their new album comes out next month. So I'll check that out. What you got, Nick, on your uh, iTunes? Man, new uh, Run the Jewels came out not too long ago. Oh, oh man, oh, that's sick that's album, sick. too. That's sick. Yeah, new Run the Jewels album. It's it's uh, woke rap, you know. They're, yeah. They're, they're talking oh, yeah. about, you know, realness. You know, it's George Floyd and all that stuff. And then, uh, you know, uh, besides that, man, just K-pop. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That run the jewels is sick though, man. LP <laughs> production and just him being a underground hip hop artist for so long, you know, and then Killer Mike just hitting it. I mean, geez. you need to hang Amazing. out with uh, Thea at the con this next year. Have some drinks with Thea and I and oh, yeah. his crew. You want some K-pop? He'll get you listening to some K-pop. Yeah, I'm man. I'm, I, I'm I'm weird, man. I I listen to just anime openings over and over and over and over and over again. If <laughs> oh, there's dude. an anime that I'm really digging, it Ooh. like makes me feel like I'm watching the show again. I get hyped up, and I can like do that while working. You know? Oh, that's awesome. Nick, put on My Hero Academia season four opening, please. Hundred percent. Please. Or, or Naruto. I mean, when yeah. I hear that music, so, I, I'm I'm running. You know, yeah, what I'm 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 I got, got one more question. When you're doing art, do you listen to any music? Do you put anything on mm-hmm. to help you draw? Movies and shows usually. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. What's I've been, what's? Uh, sorry. Sorry. I've been watching like Charmed and Charmed. Uh, oh, okay. Really old, no, hey, like hey, really okay. like '90s show sh- sh- lately. Sh- sh- Shannon Doherty Charmed or Rose McGowan yeah. Charmed. No, like I've started with the Shannon Doherty one, of okay. course. Oh yeah. It's just I, I want something that has a lot of seasons, so I'm I'm I know I'm set for at least two weeks. <laughs> I've, met, I've met her in my town. Really? At a, at a Sharky's. She's totally nice. Such a sweetheart. <laughs> I, I, she was like, I, and I, I watched Charm too because of my mom. She's like, uh, Netflix. right, because of your mom. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah, yeah. Hey, when you're gonna spend quality time with your parents, <laughs> I mean, sometimes they're gonna watch NCIS. Sometimes they're gonna watch this crazy shows that you're like, on you Hallmark. Like yeah, on Hallmark? Oh, Hallmark Christmas time. Come on, man. My mom's like right there. She's like, come sit down. I'm like, oh, man. 
but yeah i met uh shannon doherty she's totally nice total sweetheart ordering at sharky's and i'm like oh my god i wish my mom was here she's like that <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> amazing that's awesome but hey i, I want to thank uh sweeney boo again for uh, joining us uh, we really appreciate it and we're re- we're totally honored for you to come on Me our too. little uh, our little thank podcast so here and uh the invitation is, uh, is open when you come to san diego we'll take care of you the kind of crew and the team nerd herd. like we sure. this is just this is just this is like a, a fraction of the team nerd herd. you don't know how big the, <laughs> we just are. find us at the front of the line yeah. <laughs> yeah you're totally welcome to hang out with us um i've definitely jr is going to pay for your meal over at uh, quattro's milpas it's on him you know? i'm uh, all set <laughs> <laughs> um but hey uh i i want to ask alonzo um to uh, uh to um let us know what's going on with his he has, he has some stuff going on too with us. I do. Uh, so um, there's a new segment that we have uh, called Movies and Shows where I review uh, comic book related titles. So the first one I did was Warrior Nun, uh, then Old Guard. And what we have next is um, Bloodshot. And then we're going to be doing some other ones as well. So there could be The Boys, there could, who knows. Uh, but that's what we have going on for, for now. Over to you, Ian. And uh, JR, where else can they find us? Homie. Uh, you can find us as Team Nerd Herd Podcast, all one word, on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, usually we're up there putting posts, just talking about what we should do, maybe what Alonzo's next movie you should watch is, maybe other segments that we should get Nick to do. Who knows? Figure it out. Um, from there, uh, what else we got, Ian? Sweeney, and, uh, where and can Sweeney, we find you, Sweeney? Yeah, Sweeney, where can we find you? Well, if you like to look for Sweeney Boo, I'm pretty much everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on Instagram, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook. Yeah. I'm a, I follow you on Instagram. Your, your stuff is awesome. I just, I just, oh, yeah. Like, yeah. I just, I, I saw your miles. You. Thank you. And I was like, I was dude. on your live last night. <laughs> I was on your live last night. Yeah. Oh, you were. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I saw, yes. I was, I saw you, I saw you drawing and everything. I'm like, oh, man. I, I was like, I need to get some work done from her. <laughs> hey, but Sweeney, oh, oh. we have, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Lonzo. I was going to say, you got, got to open up those commissions, Sweeney. <laughs> God, the pressure is real. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thanks, guys. Get your projects done, you know? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Hey, um, but, Sweeney, I, again, um, we totally appreciate you coming on and uh, joining our little motley crew here. Um, I know Rob, if he was here, he, he would have uh, loved to uh, talk to you, too. And uh, I just want to say again, like, I appreciate what you do for young, young women. Like, Thank they need, they need that. Thank they really so need yeah, for that. Sure. Thank you. You know, so. Um, but in closing, uh, Sweeney, you want to send us off? Um, si tu veux le faire correctement, uh, collection ce que tu veux. That's perfect. Thanks, guys. That's Thank awesome. you.